So Monday, September 2nd, happy Labor Day. I'm here back at the farm. Uh, I grabbed the potatoes that were destroyed in this spot here from the truck that drove over things. Um, but I didn't dig out these yet. Or those. Or those. Or those, if there's any under there, I'm not even sure. I think that's outside the plant zone. But, so I'm going to dig those up. I brought a crate and a shovel along so I can dig them out. The other potatoes are still growing. Uh, and actually, quite a dark green, nice leaf cover on still, despite how dry it's been. It's been super dry. And now it's super sunny. And that rain I was hoping we were going to get, we didn't get. Um, but things are doing okay. And uh, I had a few of those potatoes that I pulled the other night mashed with some garlic and thyme and rosemary and oh man so good and uh looking forward to sharing those with friends and family and customers so uh it was a nice taste of things despite the uh, bad taste that somebody driving across my crop left in my mouth well so you can see that driving over them definitely does do a good bit of damage that pretty much kills that one and that one crushed them the other ones are doing okay. A couple of marks from probably from rocks or maybe from me running the machine over. But I wanted to point out all the yield potential that that prevented. That and the dry soil is preventing. Although more the fact that the plant was killed than anything. As you can see, despite how dry the soil is, these plants are nice and green and still growing and healthy. You really can see there's not a lot of moisture in here. This is it's pretty dry soil. I can feel some moisture in it, but it's not not what I'd like to see for trying to fill uh, fruit or tubers or anything. So it's actually pretty impressive considering the circumstances. So here we are over at the next row over. Just figured I'd get a clip before I dig it up, during, after, so you can get an idea. So here you can see I've kind of shoveled my way up underneath the actual plant. Now we'll pull out what's here and flip our shovel full and i'll just keep scooping underneath and lifting and kind of tilting that dumps them out all right i dug the rest of the way across and you can you can see how big these were starting to get before they were run over this one i'll be able to salvage it's a pretty nice sized potato for uh two weeks before it's supposed to be harvested and as i mentioned in previous videos i think it's going to be a little later just due to the drought we've had slowing things down for development and uh, a late start and a drought during the season a lot of uh, environmental setbacks remember environment dictates gene expression quick check check up on tomatoes just give you a taste of what we get around here give you a comparison on shoes you have a little better size comparison <laughs> That's a number 10 foot right there. So I'm going along here and just looking at the tomatoes. A lot of damage from deer and other issues, mostly from not staking, mostly from deer, <laughs> mostly from both. Point is, we got some that didn't survive in this zone here. And there was an evening and came down here and got inspired and I got interrupted with something else. But I started mulching down over this section. I just want to point out the difference in vigor and health of these plants, even just with that little bit of mulch that I got down quite late in the season. But they are standing up nicely. And of course, the deer are chewing on them and the buckwheat as well. But I just figured, well, I had the opportunity to share another mulch clip. And if you haven't seen it, I have an older series, a three-part series. Uh, I'll throw a clip into it here, um, but it's a closer look at soils and mulch, parts one, two, and three. And I go very deep into soils and mulch and managing that system, basically, uh, with mostly with native ecosystem stuff we have here in upstate New York, but it could very well apply to your area. Well, the buckwheat is starting to finish out seed. 
and turn that golden brown color and you can see the leaves yellowing from the bottom up part of that's the dry weather but part of that is a plant maturing and going into senescence but as I pulled up there were a bunch of deer over there where it's greener grazing away so I ripped up the sideline here and sure enough I come up into the middle block and they're all hanging around eating tomatoes well, they were surprised to see me come in there at about 35, 40 miles an hour. Uh, I scared them good out of there. Which means they'll stay away for about three hours. <laughs> hey, it's three hours left chewing on my crops, or what's left of them. I consider it a win. <laughs> uh, if they'd stick around, I'd put on a barbecue. Uh, be glad to barbecue up some venison. All right, uh, well, here's a shot of the other side of it, and you can see the, the soil differences again here, how much darker green, how much taller and more robust these plants are. And also, we can really see that moisture line where it's not yellowing yet. These are still green all the way to the bottom. And you can see as we get out into the edge and the soil gets drier, but that's not the case. So part of that, again, I think is that channel bringing us our moisture down through uh, the soil and the rock layers there. But also part of that is just, you know, this cover crop being in a wide area helps protect that area from evaporation and all sorts of moisture loss. It helps, you know, foster that community that keeps moisture around. And that helps build humates and carbon matter. And that helps hold more moisture. It's a self-building process. And then if you start doing destruction to it, it's a self-destroying process. So that's why we have to be so conscious and focused on keeping that self-building process going. Because it's easy to do, but it's also easy to disrupt with something just because you don't fully understand the system and how the system works as a system, as a whole. Okay, well, despite the deer bags destroying a good portion of things, we do have some nice tomatoes coming on here. And I'm going to pull this one off just to show you. And I'll bring it in and let it ripen inside because I'm not going to be able to get anything to ripen out here with all the deer and rabbits and squirrels and God knows what else is out here chewing on everything. So, uh, but you can see lots of large tomatoes on here. Again, these plants weren't really cared for very well this season. This has been a very tough season. I did not put enough time into staking and, and preparation for supportive infrastructure or mulching. Um, and I haven't even put foliar feeds on these in I don't know how long. It's been a couple of feeds. So, uh, overall, they're doing pretty good considering all that.